Well, spring is finally here, and I thought the dolls might enjoy getting their yard and garden ready. So I decided to make up one of the kits from Print Minis, the Contemporary Garden Kit. It has seed packets and bulb packages and potting soil bag and bark mulch bag and plant food box and pesticide, and there's a seed catalog so the dolls can dream if they still have snow. They can be dreaming of what they want to plant later. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this is to put together. All right, I'm gonna work out in the dining room today simply because I had to be set up for the last video I did for my other channel out here. So all my stuff is here, including my camera, so I'm just gonna continue working here. So this week we're doing another paper minis kit, and this is one of Anne's kits for the 18-inch dolls, one-third scale. I bought this kit um, 2014, apparently. I bought it when she first came out with it and I stuck it in my drawer and completely forgot to ever put it together. So I decided this week, this is going to be our Monday tutorial. We are going to make the contemporary gardening set from Paper Minis. I figure I'm kind of in a planting seeds kind of mood. I planted some tomatoes and some basil in pots in the house that I can move out later. And I thought maybe the dolls want to do that too. Maybe they want to be gardening. It's a perfect time of year for it. So here's the first two sheets, and I printed these on regular printer paper. Um, this gives you an overview. It tells you all the pages, and on the screen, these are your hot, hot links to the pages on the on the uh, DVD, the CD. So this shows you everything we're going to make. Here's a photo, and here's photos of each project. And then I printed these. Now I printed on a different paper this week. I had to buy this paper for another project, and I kind of ripped the label. I am using, this is Georgia Pacific Superior Premium Bright Inkjet and Laser Paper. It's a 28 pound paper, and it has a brightness level of 97. It's a little lighter weight than I usually work with, but a lot heavier than regular printer paper. I don't know how well it's gonna hold up for this. I'll let you know in the blog post what I think of it. But I thought I had to have it. I had to have it for something else. I'm going to see what I can use it for now on other projects. So we are going to make some bulb flower bags, and yeah, those probably wouldn't. The dolls wouldn't need these until fall, but we're going to go ahead and make those. I'll make one on camera. So eventually they'll be able to print, plant some daylilies, some bearded iris. Oh, those were my mom's favorite. She loved bearded iris. She had lots of them. Daffodils. I love daffodils, and some multi tulips. Like my daffodils are blooming out in my yard this week. Then we're also going to make a seed catalog. We have the inside pages and the cover so they can dream about what they're going to plant. We have flower seed packets. I'll do one on camera. And we also have vegetable seed packets. They'll be done the same way. And then we have bags of mulch and potting soil to do. Oh, and a, what is this? This is a shaker canister of pesticide and a plant food box. So we're going to make, I'll make a variety of these on camera and I'll show you everything as we get done. So let's start with, let's start with the bearded iris bag since that was mom's favorite thing. I'm going to use this light ruler because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing on camera. Normally, I would use a heavier ruler if I didn't have the camera going. Try and do this sitting down. I know I had my knife a few minutes ago. I've got that way too far out. You want a relatively sharp blade on your knife. Whoops, I went a little crooked there. That's okay, we can fix it. I'm going to go all the way across here and free that up. And I'm going to Cut it just so I can get this top half of this page out of my way. 
That curve I'm going to cut with my scissors. I don't have my curved blade scissors today, so I'm going to try and do it with just regular scissors. And you've seen me cut these out before. Try and throw away everything as I go. And today I'm scoring after I cut out. In fact, I have to go get a scoring tool because I don't have anything to score with on the table. Well, I'll show you how to do it with the back of the knife blade. Since I don't have my tools here, I will do it that way. Because you may not have all the tools either, and that's okay. I'm going to show you you don't need them. Now, I'm not cutting all the way to this black part that I want to keep. I'm only cutting just a little ways past where I need to be. Whoops. And the rest I'm going to do with my scissors. Remember to use scissors that are okay to use with paper, as in I have scissors that are special for fabric and I have paper scissors. And today I'm cutting everything out before I score. Sometimes I score it before. And I may do some of it on the project one way and some the other way. It just depends on what I feel like when I get to each step. Showing you that, you know, it's not that particular. This isn't rocket science. There are no, you know, like scoring and cutting police that are going to come around and tell you you have to do it one way or the other. Do it the way you are most comfortable with. And those spots that I left a little bit of white on the side of the red won't matter because they are going to be hidden inside. This, however, I don't want to leave any white edge on. All right, now. Today we're going to score with the back of the blade, simply mainly because I don't have my scoring tools and this will work just fine. Now, I mean, when I say the back of the blade, I'm going to show you here. This is the cutting edge. Let's see if I can get this angled so you can see it. This is the edge we cut with. This is the sharp edge. This is the edge I'm going to score with. So I don't want to cut through my paper. And you do have to be, and there's a dotted line here to score on also. You do need to be quite careful when you're scoring this way. But if you don't have all the tools, this is a good way to do it. And we're going to score all the way across. And there are some very tiny white lines on there to show you where to score. And we're going to score right there, even with the top. Alright, I'm going to get out my parchment paper. And I'm going to pre-fold. And does include really good directions. And I will be honest, I have not read her directions this time because I've done many, many kits over the years and I have my way of doing things. But typically it works just fine. Alright, next score. I'm going to cut up there. I'm going to fold up here on this scored line. Now, I am going to consult this for just a second. Yeah, I am going to go get something to put inside of this. I will be right back. All right, now I have some glue, some beads, and I have my tacky. I'm using tacky glue today because that's what's on my table. I don't have my glue. I usually use it as my preference, but that's okay. Use what you have. Now I'm using a toothpick. I like a toothpick for applying, especially tacky glue. And this is not a project, this part of the project, I typically would not use a glue stick for. I prefer a wet glue for this. You only put it on there, and then you're going to put glue here quite a bit of dry glue on my toothpick. Are we still, yeah, we're still under, we're still under the camera. This is about the third project I have filmed this morning, so I've been working here all morning. All right. I'm going to 
going to fold this down and I'm going to line up my edges. And then I'm going to put that tab in. Ah, sticking to my fingers. Oops, I didn't get glue on that tab. I wondered why I didn't have another tab. Okay. Now I have an eraser end of a pencil. Now I'm going to put some pony beads in there. Uh, first I'm going to drop the lid. I'm going to put just a few pony beads in there. And then some paper towel. Because I want to have something in there so that it feels like there's bulbs in there. I like the combination because it kind of feels like the real thing then. I'm going to take some more glue, put it on the back of this flap. I am going to fold the flap over, and I have a binder clip. These I buy at Dollar Tree. If you've watched my videos, you've seen them before. And I'm going to use that to clamp the top shut. I am going to repeat the same process on all the rest of the bulb bags, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next project. All right, so our bulb, flower bulb bags are all put together and drying. So now let's actually move on to the two pages of seed packets next. I want to do those next. Then I'll come back to the catalog. If I can find them. There they are. All right. So these are like a lot of other projects that we've made over the years together. Once again, I am going to, first actually I'm going to do this so that I can just cut off one at a time to work on. Now you could use scissors or you can use a knife, whatever works best for you. And since this is so small actually, I think I'm going to use my scissors as my cord for my camera coming into frame. And since this is so small, I'm actually going to score first. These are smaller. I want to score them first. Again, back side of blade. Like that. Like that. Hopefully I'm scoring straight because you guys have the better view. done this when I did that other side but I didn't think of it there all right all scored now I'm just going to use some paper scissors I'll use these for the long cuts I might pull out my shorter scissors to do the more detailed cuts these are really really simple You'll always get a better cut if you move the paper and not your scissors. And you notice I'm not cutting those corners yet. I'm going to come back with smaller scissors. There. Now I'm going to come back with these. out of my way, get my paper with the gluey spots on it back. Come on glue, come on, I just need a little more. I've lost the lid to my glue, so my glue is getting dried out. 
pre-fold all of these, but I'm not going to glue everything right away. I'm going to glue these inside tabs in. And you guys know how I like to have a little more realism. So, glue these guys in. And make sure this is all flat. Now, I have some micro beads, and they're going to be all over the place. But I got these micro beads from a friend. She had bought them for a project. The project didn't work. So I had a project I wanted to use black micro beads for. She sent them to me. Mine didn't work either very well. I think I used a quarter teaspoon of them or so. So I'm going to put just a few in here. This way, it'll sound like there's seeds in there. And now I have seeds, all her beads, all over everything here. Since these are so small, I will want to make sure I'm glued all the way to the corner. So, And there we go. All right, dolls can plant eggplants. I'm going to go ahead and finish up both pages of seed packets. And when those are all done, I'll be back and I'll show you how they turned out. All right, so now the dolls have a huge collection of seeds of all kinds. We've got tomatoes and chrys chrysanthemums and cosmos and everything, artichoke squash. They're going to have a huge garden if they plant all that. Let's clear this off, and let's do the Bug Be Gone um, pesticide shaker next. I cut that a little crooked, but that's okay. I'll use, use my scissors to neaten that up a bit. All right, I just realized that my camera was not recording while I was doing this. I am so sorry. But basically, you're going to cut out the strip that is the Bug Be Gone. You're going to line up the printed edges, and you're going to glue just the end of that. We've done cans before. If you haven't seen me do cans, check like the pet the, uh, video that I did, the cat food cans, or the groceries video, because I've done cans on several videos. Now we are going to cut this out around the edge. If you have a hole punch that is the same size as this is, that will be much better. It's much easier to punch these out than to cut them, but my hole punches were too big or too small. still have glue from the seed packets, so I'm going to dip this into it, and I'm going to dip it down on there. And I can go back in later with a red felt pen and color that edge if I decide I want to. Am I even under camera while I'm cutting? I'm not sure. I will say this larger can is a little more of a challenge to get together than the smaller food cans, which is why I didn't catch that my camera had turned off. I was so busy making sure I was getting that glued and put together right that I neglected to look up periodically to see if my camera was running. And I think I lost everything after cutting. There we go. So there we have our bug be on. Now we have a box of plant food. And I think for this one, I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. This is straight lines, and I know some of you don't have a craft knife to use. I will use a craft knife to score, though. Okay. 
I'm just going to quickly do this. Show you that you don't have to have the knife and the straight edge if you, you know, for the cutting out. You will need a straight edge to do your scoring though. And if you're more comfortable cutting with scissors than with the um, the knife, then cut them out. Cut all of them out with the scissors. It's up to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and I tend to go back and forth between the two. I'm not really convinced that I'm faster with either than either tool. And there's no hard and fast rules about how you, you know, how you do this. That's the beauty of crafting. You get to do it the way that works for you. I think the secret to cutting out these shapes with scissors is to have both a pair of short scissors for fine details and the longer scissors because you can make much straighter long cuts with long scissors. All right, let's, let's, let's score this first. Almost forgot to score. Just look at your box and see where will it fold. And typically it's pretty intuitive where you need to score to make the box the box shape. This one we do have the little flap up here. Let's see right here. And the bottom and it also has a little flap. I'm sure that's folded in. We'll know in a moment. Fold where we have scored. This will give you the option. You can have it open on the top if you want to. I'm not going to. But it's up to you. Toothpick. That's what I'm looking for. And this really goes together pretty similar to the bags that we did earlier and if you've watched my other videos with other boxes boxes all go together pretty much the same way wet wipe. i dropped my wet wipe there we go it is nice to have a wet wipe on hand when you're doing this now you could just slide your box together like that and have it so you can open it And that's really all there is to it. We have plant food. I am going to build those two larger bags off camera, and then I'll come back and show you how to finish those off. Okay, so I have the shredded bark mulch and the potting soil bags to this point, just like the other bags. I see that I'm not quite straight there somehow. If you come up not straight, just trim the bag before you glue it so that it will be nice and straight. There. Now, we want this to look like it has something in it now. So we're going to use Kleenexes. Start with one. I think it's going to take two. I want this bag to be pretty full. Yeah, that's about right. That looks about right. So we've got that in there. Take a toothpick. My toothpicks are getting really coated with glue and my glue is getting really thick at this point. I'm going to run glue. 
just a narrow band of glue. Um, and then because this is going to glue, we've got the gusset, we need the one side of the gusset too. Now, we're going to squeeze this together and we use binder clips to make this glued edge stay together. And just like on the pet food sacks that we did a few weeks ago, we can come back and we can trim this after the glue dries if we need to and get it nice and neat. Like there's going to be a ball of dried up glue there. I'm going to do the other bag, and then when my glue, well, oh, and then we have the catalog to do. So I'm going to do the other bag, and then I'll set up to do our seed catalog. All right, so now let's go ahead and score these pages first, because they're a little bit easier to see in here. Remember the back of the blade. So how many of you get the seed catalog and start dreaming about spring and better weather? About the time winter's about half over. I am. Actually, we've been lucky. We've had some, we're having a beautiful day today. We've had some really nice days already. Had some really bad weather too. But we've had some really nice weather mixed in. So. This now we are going to hold it up straight edge and hold your straight edge very firmly so you don't slip around. And I like to keep my straight edge over the part I'm keeping. That way, if my knife blade goes cockeyed, it goes out on this waste paper. And hopefully I'll stop it before it gets to the other page. scissors to cut the end cuts. And I see I'm off a little bit. That's okay. We can fix that here when we get done. Now remember, you need to leave these pages in a long strip. projects are slowly taking over my entire table. I like to cut a little more back than what Anne leaves there. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold. We know that this will go against our cover, so we know the first fold is a valley fold. Mountain fold, valley fold, and then a mountain. We know this is going to glue here, so the first fold will be this way, this way, and this way. All right, now we're going to glue this tab on. For this gluing, I've got a fresh piece of parchment paper and my glue stick. I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on that little tab. And I'm going to make sure everything is right side up. I'm going to match that up and I'm going to glue it. And I'm going to let this sit for just a few minutes so that glue stick has time to dry. 
When that's dry, I'll come back and we'll start putting our pages together. All right, this has had a couple of minutes to dry, enough that the glue stick is set up. Now we're going to start gluing these pages together so that we have pages that are printed on both sides. Since this is a little larger, I'm only doing it one set at a time. That way my glue doesn't dry out on me. Okay. Now, get this lined up. And make sure it's lined up the way you want it. There we go. All right, now this page. This one's a little bit lumpy because it's got that seam. That's where the tab is. Okay, everything looks good so far. Now the next pair of pages. I think my glue stick is just about empty. I think I'm going to have to reach for a new glue stick before I continue. I think there's enough for that one now. All right. Press that out, press it all the way to the edges. Now, because I don't trust that there's not glue between my pages, I have wax paper here. I'm going to lay some wax paper between each page. Because I've done books several times over the years, and they sometimes glue together. Now, these are actually cut for a smaller size book. So I'm going to have to kind of piece them. Mainly I'm putting them under where the clips are going to be. Now, while I'm getting the cover ready, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this. And I'm going to clamp here too, just to be sure. Now, we have a cover to cut out. Now, Anne suggests cutting this cover out of a heavier cardstock. I didn't because this paper is heavier than normal, and I was af I didn't want to make it too heavy. Look for your slight dark line. All right. Nope. Light line. Oh, I'm going to cut it out and fold it in half. Where's it have two? Let me see. Ah, da, da, da. Let's see. Let's... It looks like there may be two fold lines here, which would make sense since we have a book. So I'm going to score in both spots. It won't hurt. And feel free to cut this out of heavier paper. It would be fine. I just chose not to because I didn't want my seed catalog to be too heavy. Hopefully this video has not gotten too long for all you guys. All right. I'm going to cut that last edge just with scissors. It's going to be quicker on that little short spot. Got a little white left. Okay, so my other glue stick, I've got a go for it. Now, let's fold on both of these. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the case, right? Yep. So this gives us a little bit of a spine for our book to allow for our pages. All right, now, the mega glue stick. Now that is the back of the book. I'm gonna unclip this. And I'm going to make sure, yes, that is the back of the book that I'm on the back.
And don't worry if some of your wax paper falls out. The wax paper is optional. It's just that I've had pages glued together. And it's such a shame when you work on a book and then your pages end up being glued together. Come on. Not quite lined up. Think my Reglue this. Alrighty then, sorry about that. My daughter called and wanted to, needs me to pick her up tomorrow. Alright, so we are going to try this back cover again and I'm going to try to get this lined up. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this lining up today. It's really not that difficult. There. There. That's better. And we can always trim anything that doesn't line up correctly. Now, in theory, this cover should just come across and line up just fine. Yes, it does. All right. Put our wax paper back in because we don't want our pages to stick together. And that one came from there. That one's got glue on it, so it's really not helping the situation any. All right, now I am just going to clip this together and let this glue dry and then I'll be back and we'll look at all of our projects together. All right, I'm hoping that my glue has all dried. So we've let's look at all of our projects. Get this out of our way. We have oops, let's get this unclamped. We've got some shredded bark mulch and let's see. Yeah, we need to trim. This didn't line up perfectly. So that's easy enough to fix. We just do that. Same with the bottom. There. Got all of these, all these seed packets. Yeah, I think they're going to have one heck of a garden in the doll's world here. And let's get this trimmed. these and then our only other thing is our garden catalog our seed catalog let's see how this looks pull out our, our wax paper see it's sticking to my wax paper just a bit so that's good that I had it in there and now the dolls can get ready to plant their garden and do some landscaping I hope you enjoyed this video I always enjoy putting together these kits that Ann has created for us. I don't know why I hadn't done this earlier, but I did it today. Uh, if you, uh, There will be a link to Ann's site on the blog post. If you go over and, and uh, purchase things from her, be sure and tell her that I sent you over. We love to share back and forth the pe things that people say about that they found me through her or her through me, which it's we love that conversation that we have quite often lately and thank you guys for letting her know that you're seeing my videos and that you're learning about her from them uh, if you haven't subscribed to her newsletter she has a free newsletter and that gives you access to all her complimentary projects and she has a lot of those too and I've done some of those in previous videos uh, if you haven't checked out my Facebook group be sure and do that and be sure and check my blog post that goes with this video and if you make some stuff from any of my videos, I'd love to see photos. Shoot a photo to me and let me see what you're making. If you have requests for videos, let me know that too so I can put them on the list. I'll talk to you later. Bye.